Hello everyone, today is Saturday, September 25th, 2010, and this is the video that a lot of you have been waiting for. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the data that I collected during my runtime tests and what the, what the results show. Uh, first, I want to start with some of the baseline parameters that I used for the testing. The engine speed during all of the tests was 3,450 RPMs, which is pretty much full tilt, plus or minus 50 RPMs. The gasoline by weight for each test run was 3.00 ounces, plus or minus 0 0.005 ounces of gasoline. Gasoline and octane was 87, and all of the gasoline used for all of the tests was from the same batch of gasoline. The alternator output was 14.5 volts at full load, 14.6 volts at no load. So very good regulation on the alternator. The alternator efficiency, the published efficiency for the 22SI Delco Remy alternator that I used is 60%. That's 60% conversion efficiency from mechanical to electrical. We'll go, we'll go over the details of that in just a minute. The measured efficiency of my HHO cell was 4 MMW, or 57% total conversion efficiency on the cell itself. Ambient temperature for all of the tests was approximately 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and we also had fairly, uh, a fairly consistent average barometric pressure of 29.90. The small glass jar that I used for the tank and the homebrew fuel bowl at the top gave me a runtime repeatability accuracy of an astounding plus or minus 0.5%. The total spread when I started doing tests was a five second spread over 10 minute test runs. And uh, that gave me plus or minus half a percent. I was amazed. With that high of a repeatability accuracy, I was actually able to omit quite a bit of repetitive testing because the results were so close that I, I no longer need, I, I had the confidence that I needed that I was doing the tests correctly. The calculated values for these tests. Um, for every 10 amps of load that I placed on the output of the alternator, that was 145 watts on the output. If you take that and divide it by 60% efficiency, you end up with 242 watts of mechanical energy input required to produce 145 watts of electrical energy on the output. So for every 10 amps you place on the, on the alternator, for every 10 amp load, you are adding approximately, very very close to, one-third mechanical horsepower load from the engine. So for a 30 amp load, just about exactly one mechanical horsepower load. That's a very nice number to work with. The net total power conversion efficiency from the alternator through the HHO cell to the final product of HHO gas, when you multiply 57% times 60%, is only 34%. That is another very significant value that we're going to get to in just a minute. Okay, so... In this first clip that I'm about to show you, I was burning 5.00 ounces of fuel per test run. I later decided it took too much time to run each test, so I dropped back to using 3 ounces of fuel. But just for reference, I wanted you to see this. My no-load run times were 19 minutes and 54 seconds, plus or minus 3 seconds each run. My passive load run time was calculated with 30 amps, driving the cell but not reintroducing the HHO back into the engine. The last run uses the exact same load with the HHO reintroduced. Watch what happens. temperature 
at approximately 775 degrees despite the fact that I am running considerably leaner on the gasoline. My last run time at this load was approximately 15 and a half minutes. I want you to pay attention in how much fuel is left in that bowl right now. Quite a lot of fuel. I've been running for almost 14 minutes now. I just slowed the last time I was done one minute from now. This is going to greatly exceed my original run time. By a very large margin. I'm going to double check my exhaust gas temperature right now. 785 degrees. 790. Despite the fact that the fuel bowl is empty, look at the flow bowl. Eighteen minutes, five seconds.